Good morning to you on this Thursday, the 1st of September 2022. My name is Reverend Jo Richards, Rector here in Canterbury, St Dunstan, St Mildred's and St Peter's. And lovely that you've joined us on this September morning for morning prayer. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all, to you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made as we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep. Open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night is past and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our appointed psalm for today is Psalm 90. O Lord my God, in you I take refuge. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the earth and the world were formed, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, Turn back, O children of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday, which passes like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream, they fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes, in the evening it is dried up and withered. For we consume away in your displeasure, we are afraid at your wrathful indignation. We have set our misdeeds before you, and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone, our years come to an end like a sigh. The days of our life are three score years and ten or if our strength endures even fourscore. Yet the sum of them is but labour and sorrow, for they soon pass away, and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath and your indignation like those who fear you? So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Turn again, O Lord, how long will you delay? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us with your loving kindness in the morning that we may rejoice and be glad in all your days. Give us gladness for the days you have afflicted us and for the years in which we have seen adversity. Show your servants your works and let your glory be over their children. May the gracious favour of the Lord, our God, be known to uh, be upon us. Prosper our handiwork, O oh, prosper the work of our hands. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from 2 Samuel, and this morning it's chapter 7, verses 1 through to 17. Now when King David was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go, and tell my servant David. Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people, Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you where, wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, 
and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom for ever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. When he commits iniquity, I will punish him with a rod, such as mortals use, with blows inflicted by human beings. But I will not take my steadfast love from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure, for even before me, your throne shall be established for ever. In accordance with all these words and with all this vision, Nathan spoke to David. And now for our canticle. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God, who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord and I've called you in righteousness. I've taken you by the hand and kept you. I've given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations. I have called you in righteousness. Our second reading this morning, again, it's taken from Acts, and it's chapter 7, and it's verses 44 through to 53. Stephen continued, Our ancestors had the tent of testimony in the wilderness, as God directed when he spoke to Moses, ordering him to make it according to the pattern he had seen. Our ancestors in turn brought brought in with Joshua when they dispossessed the nations that God drove out before our ancestors. And it was there until the time of David, who found favour with God and asked that he might find a dwelling place for the house of Jacob. But it was Solomon who built a house for him. Yet the Most High does not dwell in houses made by human hands, as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Did not my hand make all these things? You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you are forever opposing the Holy Spirit just as your ancestors used to do. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They killed those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, and now you have become its betrayers and murderers. You are the ones that received the law and ordained by angels, and yet you have not kept it. And now for our responsory. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name, you are mine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. For Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Now for our Benedictus. You promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, 
to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. Let us pray. Loving God, as we come together this morning, we pray for the day that lies ahead, perhaps meetings that we have, chance encounters on the high street perhaps, or in a queue in the shops. But whatever this day holds, we ask for your blessings upon it. Remaining ever mindful for those for whom today may be a tough one, for those perhaps in hospital or recovering from surgery, those receiving treatments or, or maybe receiving a diagnosis today. Lord, whatever this day holds, we pray that you are with us in all that we are and all that we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for our world this day. We continue to hold in our hearts and minds the people of Ukraine and the wider region. There's other places which we perhaps hear less about, Yemen and Syria, Afghanistan, and I pray for peace in the Holy Land. And as we've heard in the news today, we pray that voices may be heard in China. We pray for all those across our world whose voices are perhaps silenced, for the marginalised, for those whose voice may not be heard. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for our church, for Justin, our Archbishop, for Rose, our bishop, for Will, our new archdeacon, as he steps up into his post. For all those lay and ordained who minister across our benefice, who minister across our deanery, our diocese and beyond. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And this day we pray particularly for our young people. For so many of them are perhaps in a uh, state of transition between schools, colleges, universities. For those who perhaps be starting school this week for the first time. For those who've moved from primary to secondary, we pray for them. For those who are perhaps changing schools into the sixth form. For those who have left school and soon to begin university and colleges. For those who perhaps left university, college, apprenticeships and seeking work. So Lord, whatever all our young people are up to, we pray that in that perhaps uncertainty for some, they know your comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for all those who are struggling at this time in body, mind or spirit. For those on our benefits prayer sheet who've asked us particularly for prayer at this time. For those known only to you, O Lord. In a moment of quiet, we lift them to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all those who are mourning the loss of loved ones at this time. For those whose anniversary of death may fall today. For those preparing for funerals and for all those who are grieving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
And on our um, cycle of prayer today, we've been asked to pray for the local government and community leaders. So we prayed particularly for Canterbury City Council and for the work that all our councillors do there. And for the wider government, again, at this time of transition, we pray for all those and for wisdom for all in authority. We pro pray for all those who provide our local services and particularly our emergency services and for the work that they do. Praying for those who work with young people or older people. Praying for the schools, colleges and universities, emergency and rescue organisations. So Heavenly Father, accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now for our collect. O oh God, you declare your almighty power most chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant to us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may receive your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord, bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you as ever for joining us for morning prayer, and thank you, John, for your comments. Lovely to worship together. And please do, if you can, join us for night prayer at six. Otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow at nine with morning prayer. Goodbye and God bless. Have a lovely day. Bye for now.